Okay, now it's all clean. Now you can leave it like this. Your outer edge is darker and your lighter edges, or your inside edges are a little bit lighter. So you can leave it like that and the ants won't mind. But I find it really hard to observe the eggs and the larvae against such a dappled surface. And I have started using grout as an inside lining, which actually works really well considering it is mold resistant, which fire brick is also. But you take a uh, grout, a little bit thinner than a pudding or a ketchup paste, and you just kind of lather it in there. Okay, that's it for the gray. I can't leave it like that, but I seem to like the black outer edges. And this gives it a, and if I use the charcoal, it gives it a really neat, um, really dirty underground look once it dries. If your fire brick is dry, it will absorb the moisture a lot easier. But then it also leaves a lot of the residue on top instead of kind of sinking in. I have tried painting this. It does not work well. It just absorbs the paint as easily as it did the water. Which means your tunnels bleed in with the ink or with the paints. And it just spoils the look. Don't worry about laying it on too thick. It will absorb lots of the dye in the grout. Okay, that looks good. So we're going to let this dry for about 24 hours. By then the brick should be fairly dry. And we're going to take a cloth and rub all the excess off. And then you'll have actually a surface you can actually silicone your glass onto. Because right now, if we were to try and silicone it onto the powder left behind, it'd just come off. The silicone can't adhere to straight dust. But all that extra grout will allow the color to sink in a lot better. Okay, our grout is now dry. So we're going to brush off the excess grout. We're only going to do the stuff on the outside. We're not going to touch the tunnels. And we're just doing the outside so that the silicone will bind to it later. Just give it a good brushing. Anything loose will interfere with the silicone or sealant later. You notice that the brick does start to show through. But I actually like the effect because it looks like the dirt you'll see underneath the earth where it's all dappled. You just really have to worry about the stuff where the silicone is going to sit. Anything else you don't need to wipe down so, so hard. Definitely darker than it was before, though. Okay. Now, our entrance where we're going to put our tubing, we're going to very carefully rub that out. Not that hard. Okay. Our tubing still fits. It's still level. Not going to be any problems with it. Okay, so we're now going to grab a two-part epoxy. This is a five-minute epoxy I use. You can just get from like most of your dollar stores and stuff. Um, I prefer the clear stuff just because you can see the ants through it, but in the end it really doesn't matter. So, let's mix this up.
kind of lather a bunch of it all around. I find that this clear stuff tends to turn a little more liquidy after a while and it fills in all the cracks. I use two part epoxy because silicone simply doesn't have the strength to resist the movement when the when you're moving the tubing to connect it to the out world. <coughs> Turn it to me whichever way you want at this point. We can even go like that. Nah, I want it Okay. Put some more on the cracks in between the tubing and the brick. You can always add a couple different layers if it starts to get really away on you. And that's it. This stuff will harden in five minutes, but it won't completely cure for about 24 hours. But we can work with it after about 10 or 15 minutes. So, okay. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. My epoxy is now hard. You're going to take your glass, and you can either drill a hole if you have a drill press and a diamond tip bit, or you can actually just use a glass cutter and cut a small corner off and put it where your um, tunnels aren't. That's another easy way to water, because you can water anywhere along the brick still. So, once you have everything cut, and if you're going to do an edge like that, I advise sanding it. So, then you're going to take aquarium sealant. You're going to put a border around it. Make sure your glass is clean. I already cleaned mine. Because the inside piece, once you put it on, you're not going to get it back off again. And of course, I just put it right in the middle of where my hole is going to go. So, let's quickly fix this. I can take a small drill and drill through the silicone once I get the glass on. Out of the way. So yeah, so don't make that mistake. Push it down. Then put a weight on it and let it dry for a good twelve hours or so. Okay, the silicone is now dry, and because I had put silicone where my watering hole is going to be, I'm just going to quickly drill that silicone out. So. There. Anything that lets the water through, it's pretty easy. So. Okay. Now, because we have silicone and epoxy in here, there might be little tiny air bubbles or little tiny cracks that weren't completely filled. I can see one here for sure. We're going to take some more two-part epoxy and do another security layer, just to prevent escapees. Put that closer where you can see it. I'm once again just using that clear five-minute epoxy. Once you mix it, it turns a little bit liquidy and it seems to run down into all the little holes and cracks. gob of that. You can see it's pretty drippy. OK, 
Okay. So, that'll dry in about 5 or 10 minutes, and we'll be free to continue on. Just leave it up like that so it doesn't drip out. Our epoxy is now dry, or at least tacky. It's not going to fully cure for 24 hours. I'm going to show you an optional step, which will help you uh, cover up the back and help reduce the evaporation rate. Just going to cover this up. We don't want this painted. Uh, your regular spray paints just soak right in given how porous the fire brick is. You need a fairly thick rubber spray, like used on undercoatings and the uh, side guards of the cars. I used um, a, a rocker guard. I chose black just because I like that color. But okay, Like I said, this is optional. If you don't, you can leave it. You'll get much better airflow in here. But this, if you spray it, it'll help um, increase your humidity in the nest. So if you're gone for three or four days, or if you've got a really small nest, you won't have to water it every day. So, just... It is also optional just to leave the back open for some airflow. Okay, we don't want it to dry right on the rubber, so I'm going to grab the other half of that paper towel. You're going to carefully cut this. If you try and pull it, the black rubber there will actually stick and drag along your tubing. I'm assuming you don't want black streaks along your tubing. So put that down and pull it out. Now, it's a good thing your tube's so nicely and firmly on the, in the nest. We're going to pick this up. If you want, you can use some more paper towel to just wipe down the edges of the glass. Mine's going into a frame, so it's really not necessary, but... Then we're going to... There. So otherwise, it might actually, when it dries, be stuck to the paper, which isn't a bad thing, but... It's easy enough to tear off, but it's just a step I don't want to do. So, we're going to let that dry for about 6 to 12 hours is the average drying time for this stuff. Well, the spray has dried now, so there it is. Okay, now I'm going to put the picture frame on this. Because our tubing is so high, your picture frame isn't going to be able to get over that. So I just took the Dremel, actually, one of the ceramic bits. It actually worked really well to carve that out. Just fit it over like that. I've pretty gotten some black stuff on there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you're going to take your frame, dust off the inside of it. Okay, now we're going to silicone it on. You can use whatever kind of silicone you want because it's actually not going to touch the ants. This is just going to tack the frame on, so you don't need much. Just be careful when you lift up your formicarium. Remember that your glass is only attached by a thin layer of silicone. Just in case you make a really big nest and it decides to fall apart. Okay, I'm just spreading this all out a bit. Keep it as far back from the edge as you can as long as the glass hits it. Otherwise it's going to ooze out. You can see that because it's over, kind of overhanging. So. There we go. Push it down firmly. And now let it dry for a couple of hours. Then after that, you wait at least 24 hours before you introduce your ants to it. And just moisten the nest first beforehand. Well, I hope you enjoyed this.